So there's a smell at the moment. Um, kind of smells like petrol. Look what they've done here. Uh oh. See the done? fluid clutch? It's seized, right? Oh, and shit. they've welded it. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest or wrong channel. G'day guys. I don't want to do this. G'day guys. I've gone out and done something incredibly stupid. In fact, most people would call this frankly idiotic. But I know you, my loyal subscribers, will absolutely love that I've gone out and bought the Mercedes S-Class from Wish. Welcome to my 2007 Sangyong Chairman, a Korean full-sized luxury sedan that has just 90,000 original kilometers on it, and I paid 5,200 Australian drachmi for. This car is super rare, and I wanna start a new series on the channel where I go out and I buy something stupid, but fantastic like this. I also am going to fix any issues that this thing has, and as you'll find out, it has some. And of course, I will film a full, beautiful, cinematic quality review of it too. But in today's installment, we're going to take a tour of my new to me 2007 Sangyong Chairman, the S Class from Wish. And then through the power of editing, we're going to go back about a week when I picked up this car and took it for its first drive. Then we're going to go pick up my crippled dad who's just had his total knee replaced, Daddy Brand, as you will know him. And then I'm gonna take it to Dom, my mechanic, to see what is wrong with it. Um, and being a week in advance, I can tell you, it does have some things wrong with it. So before I get into the video, if you do wanna see really cool videos like this into the future where I buy old, weird, wacky cars, unique cars, I would like to say, like this, then you have to let me know by liking the video, by commenting down below, sharing your thoughts on the car, on how I look. Of course, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see as soon as I release new installments of this car and share it with friends. You have to, please. Now, a bit later, I'll be explaining why I went out and bought myself a Sangyong chairman. But for now, I wanna tell you about Sangyong because a lot of you won't even know what it is. Sangyong is a Korean car manufacturer. They're about the fourth largest in Korea. Think Hyundai, think Kia. And over the years, it has gone in and out of receivership and bankruptcy. They only filed for bankruptcy like a few months ago. Yet they still sell, and they do sell in Australia to this day. But just before the chairman first made its debut in the late 90s, Sangyong was actually partially owned by Mercedes. And so the reason that this thing looks like a Mercedes is, well, it is. And that's why I've called this video the S-Class from Wish, because it, it essentially is. Powering my Sangyong Chairman is a Mercedes 3.2 litre inline six-cylinder petrol engine, better known as the M104, and it's paired to a five-speed Mercedes automatic torque converter transmission, which sends power through to the rear wheels. What's even more interesting about my S-Class from Wish is that it's actually based on the E-Class, the W124 E-Class, which was built by Mercedes between about the mid 80s to the mid 90s. Yet this car here is from 2007. And really, it's like a hybrid between an E-Class and an S-Class because it has been stretched out to be a limo to be 5.1 meters long. This thing is so big and difficult to park. But that means that you get some amazing features which we'll touch on in just a second. And actually, all of this wasn't built in Germany. It was all built in Korea under license from Mercedes. They gave Sangyong permission and licensed out for them to build the engine, the drivetrain, and the whole body of the car. Which is why it looks like a poverty spec Mercedes. It's because it's actually just got a Sangyong body kit on it, and obviously quite a few changes to the interior. It's fascinating. Now, only a hundred of these were ever brought to Australia between about 2005 to 2008. They were extremely rare, and Sangyong, bless their hearts, thought, hey, we know it will help us break in to the Australian market, a flagship luxury sedan. It was meant to go up against the Holden Caprice, or Statesman, one of the two, and the Ford Fairmont. There's Fairmont and Fairlane. I think this was the Fairmont competitor. No, it was the Fairlane. Just check my notes. That is embarrassing. Anyway, those were driver-focused cars. Uh, this was not. <laughs> this was meant for you to sit in the back. Driving was kind of a second priority. And it was also more expensive than those cars. When this sold, it was 57,000 Australian dollars. To be fair, it came fully loaded. And this one has the only optional extra which is this roof. And also this two-tone paint job, which I love. 
well, that's a pretty rare option in Australia too. But anyway, that 57,000 Australian dollars today is about 80,000 Australian dollars. So this thing uh, was not cheap, but this thing is cheap now. Low mileage, clean, 5,200 Australian dollars. It runs and drives very well with a few niggles which we will see later in this video. Anyway, enough history. There will be a full review of this car, as I said. For now, I wanna give you a tour of the outside and more importantly, the inside. All right, starting up front, and you can see that it does have that really cool dual tone paint. As I said, a very rare color option in Australia. Most people went with black. You have these headlights here with LED strips. These are halogens, but not too uncommon for 2007. That is Mercedes. <laughs> and this is the Sanyong logo. And you know what it means? It means two dragons intertwined rising up to heaven that is the official explanation anyway the front i think is pretty cool again you have to like look twice at it because you really think that it's mercedes but it's not here is the wheels the 16 inch wheels uh, pretty common again for that time but with their giant tire tread they just look a little bit weird considering how big this car is but eh, I don't mind it now this was the CM600S there was also a 500 500S 400 600S was like second to the top and then there was like a limo limo version on top of that with an extra long wheelbase VIP of course we are VIPs this uh, wing mirror here is broken but damage generally is actually really low again peep the sunroof chrome bits absolutely everywhere and then the back i really really like the back you have these tail lights which are fully led and they look great we have sensors down here which i would love for them to work but they're not and i'm definitely going to be fixing that but otherwise i think it's a really really handsome look with some damage up there but eh, who gives a damn we'll come back to the boot later because it is quite big but yeah i just love the way it looks on the outside now this is the real test it starts up every single time, which I'm pretty happy with, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest with you. But in here, it is a sea of leather. There are plastics, not uncommon for this kind of era of 2000s, but still really nice. You have like this scrunch leather on the door, more leather around and leather here. The most faux wood in the entire world. It's quite funny here. We have the glove box. You can lock it for valet parking. We have a 10 speaker. Uh, premium sound system however the stereo doesn't um well it, the lcd doesn't display it still works and i've put a cassette inside of it like a cassette to org so that helps but um yeah that was actually quite difficult for me to put in because i'm a millennial this also has adaptive dampers which we'll get into in the full review and you can circle the air it has an air quality sensor within here and it can change between outside and inside air to give you better quality of air that's a very asian market thing but still very happy to have it Mercedes gauges. This thing looks pretty dated within here for a 2007 and you have your steering wheel controls here. But again, a Mercedes steering wheel with Mercedes switch gear there too. Also, yeah, peep that. that. That does not work very well. But then you just have some things which are German over engineering. For example, you want to open that. It delivers upwards. This is more German over engineering. Look at that. Although I can't tell if this is Korean engineering or German engineering. I don't think this existed in the W124. So, hey, there you go. We have heated seats. They don't work either. There are some electrical gremlins. And also have a look at that. You can move the seat back and forward. Chairman logo. How cool is that? You wouldn't be a chairman if you if you aren't sitting in your in your chairman branded seat. And these seats are very comfortable. And they're leather, but they do have that classic like... You know, they got that sound to it. But hey, at least you get a sunroof. As I said, a very rare option. The only optional extra. And this car has it. 5200 bucks. I, I can't believe it. But the back seats, that's where you want to be. Take a look at this. So getting into the back seat, you can see where all the room has been saved by this long wheelbase. It's all in the back. And when you get in, it is just incredible. And not just because you already have loads of room with a passenger seat in a normal position. You have an airline... <coughs> airline style tray table that could do with some uh, with some lubrication I'll tell you what you've also got some cup holders down here which are cooled and heated depending on what you want which i think is just absolutely awesome you've got these really nice little pull downs here but this is where the magic happens you pull down this you press this and from here you can control the stereo this works by the way the stereo doesn't let's see if i can turn it on Eh, whatever, won't worry about it, it does work. But then here, you have the controls for the seats because these seats, they do 
recline so you can lie back. And because you don't want this seat in your way from here, you press that and this seat moves forward. And you can push it forward here too. So you can get the most comfortable, comfortable you have ever been in your entire life. Again, $5,200 and I can stretch out and relax back here and recline. And of course, these seats on this side, they do recline as well, but this seat you can't move forward for uh, what I hope are obvious reasons. And then the boot is actually a pretty decent size. It's not the largest out there, especially considering that a lot of the room has been eaten up by the back seats where the passengers take precedence, but it's still plenty of storage space. So let's go now and uh, take it for our first drive through the magic of editing where I also look like I'm homeless. Enjoy. All right, so this is the first drive of my new Sangyong chairman. This is just insane. Now, this thing feels like a boat already, I can tell you that. But I am really super excited to see what this thing can do. It's decently powerful. There are definitely some electronic issues. This, uh, this indicator is like it's having a seizure at the moment. Oh, I don't want to do that too much because, well, I don't particularly trust it. Now that's my own trust issues. You see, a car like this has the W204 Mercedes inline six cylinder engine, which was really one of the last Mercedes engines that that were well, was over engineered and, and was built to last before the accountants came in and said, well, make everything cheap. And driving right now, I can't feel any of the bumps in the road, but I also can't feel the steering. This has to have one of the most disconnected steering feels of, I've ever felt. And by design, you wanted something incredibly comfortable, uh, incredibly easy to drive. And well, this is about as light a steering as you can get. Back to the engine though, 162 kilowatt of power and 320 newton meters of torque, which was pretty decent figures for that time. Considering that this car is built on underpinnings from 1991, this car that was built in 2007 definitely feels like an early 90s car to drive. But for anyone who's driven an early 90s car, you'd know that that's actually not a bad thing. And it's just because it is so comfortable, so smooth, and you have a reliable drivetrain setup, which cannot be said for a lot of modern day cars. And so I'm on my way now to go visit my dad, who is in hospital, he's just had a total knee replacement, but he is the guy that got me into these kinds of cars. You see, well before I was even old enough to drive, dad was buying and selling the weirdest of cars. In fact, he had, a, I think it was like a 2004 Sanyong Musso Ute, which also had Mercedes running gear and it had a Mercedes diesel. And it was a great car. And he's had absolutely every weird old piece of crap car out there. And that's what's got me hooked. But anyway, I'm gonna visit dad uh, I told him about it. I haven't told my girlfriend still, but I told dad about it and uh, he was super, super excited. And because I'm still young, I'm 23, I don't have that much disposable income. The plan was, and thankfully he agrees, to buy this car, drive it around, make a few videos on it, and eventually, if I can let it go, give it to dad because we have a farm in Tassie and he needs a run around to get from the farm to Hobart, which is about an hour and a half drive. And, uh, and this would be perfect for it. A car that cost me $5,200, hopefully it's not gonna cost more than $800 to get this thing fully sorted. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it, but we'll find out. Famous last words. And then uh, hopefully he'll buy it off me at some point. So yeah, that's the plan. I think a pretty common question I'm gonna get about this car is, why? <laughs> why would you buy a Sangyong Chairman? And there's actually a few reasons. I have been looking at a car like this, a Sangyong Chairman, for years, I don't know why, I don't know why. And actually, I do know why, because I'm a weird guy and I like weird cars. The second reason is I've been fascinated by them. Only a hundred of these cars were ever imported to Australia over the space of about three years. But yes, it was weird, so I wanted it. The other reason is that it hasn't been hit by the COVID tax. It seems every single car out there, new or used, it's just skyrocketed in price. When I saw it sold my Ford Falcon Ute, I got like, 
12 something for it and we bought it for eight. But because no one knows about the Sanyong Chairman, no one wants a Sanyong Chairman, well, it's mine. <laughs> And then I saw this one, it had the dual tone paint, the white on grey, a very rare option in Australia, as was this sunroof. Almost none of these have this sunroof, it was the only optional extra, and this one has it, and it works, look. It works! And of course the other reason is, I want to kickstart something like this on the channel, because I love it. I have such a passion for it. Uh, and I hope you guys like it too. So if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos, you need to let me know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you think if you wanna see more like this and definitely share it with friends because that's how I know that, yeah, I can keep doing this. I can go out and make stupid purchases like this. You tell me a 23 year old going out buying Sang Yong Chairman's. Oh wait. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go see Cripple. <laughs> See dad. Don't touch the screen. Is this recording, is it? It is recording. Just one second. This is very exciting. Alrighty. So we have daddy here, daddy brand. And we're going to go see the Sang Yong. <gasps> I can see it from here. It's unbelievable. And I'm not just saying it. Okay, so the, dad, this has the. It looks better than the Mercedes. You are heavy. Yeah, well, I've got a bad knee. So. Dad, let me tell you about this car because I don't think you know anything about it. It's got a dual, so the dual tone paint on it, right? It's wow. actually quite rare. Should I turn this around? Yeah, turn it around. Show, show the people. The dual tone paint is actually quite rare. Um, the white on grey. And it's also got a factory sunroof, which is also rare. This is one of a hundred cars to ever come to Australia over like three years. Failed miserably. Absolutely miserably. And it looks like a Mercedes because it is a Mercedes. I think it looks fantastic. I thought you'd like this. How would this go at the front? I mean, oh, it'd be perfect. I, I, I'm I actually, part, I did this watch out, watch out. Let me open it up. I love it. I absolutely love it. I hope the bloody wheelchair doesn't roll off. Look, it's, it's actually, this vehicle is really good looking. I'm completely surprised and, uh, and just a total rip off of the same fence. Wow, bloody weezer. So let me show you some of this stuff, right? Chairman. Chairman, so the door seals light up. Right, inside, let me sit down. All right, I hope you've got a handbrake on. I do. You've got this here, which reclines the seat forward and back. It's bloody I impossible it. to see. The age of this car, I can see it's already, it's got a lot of stuff, which, you know, would have been. Dad, this was $5,200, this car. $5,200 and it runs that perfectly, it drives really well Let's too. Let's look at the front of it. Yeah. Wow, bloody wee. It looks fantastic. I honestly think it looks fantastic. I don't think you could have done much better. When do I get it? When I'm bored of it. Oh, come on. And it's also got memory seats too. I need it now. No, because I don't have a proper car. You're crippled. You can't Six weeks. Anything. Six weeks. So we'll see. If enough people watch this video, if enough people watch this video, I might be able to get another car. I, I just love, I love the chairman. It's so dicky, but it's great. So you approve? Oh, wow, we. You approve? Well, I like unusual, you know. Weird uh, cars. Weird cars, so this is definitely. One of a hundred, and the sun. Weird. Matthew, you've done well, boy. All right, I got dad's approval. So there's a smell at the moment. Um, kind of smells like petrol. That's, uh, I don't think that's a good sign. <laughs> I don't think that's a good sign. Might not be me, but it's quite strong. So uh, let's hope it, this car doesn't explode on the way there. Oh yeah. All right, so we're here at Lantern Motors. I met my mechanic, his name's Dom, lovely guy. Let's see what he has to say about the, uh, the chairman. Is that car the same you want, sir? Yeah. It looks Mercedes. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, front look Mercedes. Because our thing is it looks Mercedes, but um, why the logo is different? Yeah, exactly. What do you think of my Sang Yong chairman? Do you know what? They're pretty bulletproof. I've never seen one of these before. A yeah, hundred of these came to Australia. Do you know how much I paid for this car? No. $5,200 $5, I paid for this car. Oh, and yeah. it runs and drives. Turn it on. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Can I just quickly show you the back before you turn it on? Take a look at this, right? If you want to be oozing in luxury, you press oh, okay. this. And Oops. you've got your independent... Uh... Look. Bloody hell. So these sold absolutely horribly in Australia, as you can imagine. Because... But if, but if it had a Mercedes tag? 
uh, it, it would, would sell. It would sell, and it would probably cost about six times as much. Decent size. Decent size. I think he likes it. Let's uh, open the hood and see what he thinks of the engine. I think it's pretty good. Now it's only done ninety thousand k's on it, so it's pretty. Is it registered? Low. Yeah. Yeah, it's registered, but I've got to transfer it to my name. Thank you. I'll do all that. Are these generally pretty good engines? Look what they've done here. Uh oh. What See the done? fluid clutch? It's seized, right? Oh, and shit. they've welded it. They've done a, a short, a shortcut. See it? Yep. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yep. Oh well, that's one problem. The fluid clutch. How bad is that an issue? It's not an issue, but I'm just saying they've cheated. Oh. Well, you'll fix that up for me, right? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's not too expensive. No, I uh, leave it away. It doesn't overheat. Oh, well, not yet. I've only driven it a few hundred kilometers, but yeah, someone's put that on. Oh, assholes. Do you want to start it up and see what you think of the sound? He he seems to reckon that there was like a, well, a belt sound. <laughs> it's normal. There you go, it's normal. It's got a five speed in it. Did you get it from a dealer or what? Nah, got it privately. Is it a good, do you reckon? Goodbye? Let's see if it's alright underneath. Yeah, it's cheap. That's a big it's a big point. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 I don't know if that's Korean over-engineering or German over-engineering. Oh, it's a drink holder, yeah? It's a drink holder. And this one that's an mean? ashtray, and you can remove that. How cool is that? So I think I got Dom's seal of approval. Um, this thing's going in for its roadworthy and he's going to check under it and see if there's anything wrong with it. So we'll find out on the uh, on the next installment of my Sangyong Chairman. Um, also, haven't had time, uh, but I will introduce this to my girlfriend who will absolutely hate it. So stay tuned for that too. Uh, definitely comment down below what you think of my purchase. Like the video too and subscribe if you're new around here and please do share it. I'd love to keep doing this in the future and the only way is by, uh, well, people like you helping me out. So um, until the next time where we will pick it up, see what's wrong with it and uh, introduce it to my girlfriend who will absolutely hate it. Till then.